first installment of the Vermont Institute of Celtic Arts Heritage Series. And we're uh, with Mike McNinch today. So Mike, we have a couple of questions for you. How old were you when you started playing, and why did you decide to start piping? Well, I was 11 years old. Um, I was attracted to the sound of the pipes, and my parents placed great importance on it. Every time they saw the, uh, a pipe band or a piper, it was, oh, look at the pipes, look at the pipes. This is on TV, uh, in parades, at, at the Nova Scotia border. They're from New Brunswick, and they grew up during wartime, and they heard a lot of pipes and a lot of fiddle, and there were always fiddle albums in the house. So uh, away I went to learn, and um, with uh, I needed a hobby, and so I went to learn from uh, Avery Head, who's the pipe major of the Syracuse Scottish Pipe Band, and that was, ironically, my first lesson was on St. Patrick's Day, 1977. So this leads right into our second question: uh, Who taught you? Who were your your varied teachers over the years? Well, my initial I, I count really two main people uh, as my instructors, and that would be Avery Head, who started me out. I was the worst student he ever had. Did he play in pipe bands, or what was his...? He played in, uh, in the Syracuse Scottish Pipe Band, and he had played in a couple of the other local bands in Syracuse. And I believe he had gone to the College of Worcester out in Ohio. They were the Lod McLeod. Right. And... Um, He's originally from Michigan, I think. Was he pipe major in the band at the time? Oh, the Syracuse band, yes, yes. Syracuse Scottish. And then in 1986, uh, the whole family moved to Connecticut. Uh, Dad worked for Bristol Myers, so they moved everybody down. And Chuck Murdoch got wind that I was moving down, and he judged me in and, uh, and solo contests and really uh, was interested to see if I'd come and play with the band, so... Uh, this is Manchester. Yeah. yeah, so I got the music from him at the Capital District Games uh, in 1986, which will be 30 years this year since I officially joined the band. Wow. So I would... Uh, I Very never cool. did formal lessons with Chuck. I would... Uh, he would have me stay after practice and play my competition tunes and um, give me pointers here and there and did a lot of paying attention learned a lot of how I set up a band really comes from Chuck and my experience in Manchester uh, who was who has had the biggest influence on you as a as a musician that's really difficult to say <laughs> uh, I've had so many influences name um, a couple well, um, obviously, uh, Avery Head and Chuck Murdoch. Um, bands I've listened to. Uh, I had to learn how to listen to rock and roll because the other kids were listening to that stuff. And I was uh, quietly nerding out and had the headphones on listening to the Chieftains, Planksty, the Bothy Band, the Tannehill Weavers, the Battlefield Band. Anything I could get with piping, and all the old military pipe band albums, the competition ones too. And in later years, you know, I think it was about 1984 when I suddenly realized that, wow, some of these bands like Led Zeppelin are really, really good. <laughs> so I did learn how to learn, listen to that eventually, but uh, everything gets strained through kind of a pipe band filter, and uh, I might hear a change in a tune and think, wow, nice break. What about what about small pipes or uh, lowland pipes in general and Breton music? You must you must count some influences, some specific influences there. Very early on in my piping, I became aware that there were different kinds of bagpipes. We had Polish friends of the family, and through them and a, a, one copy of the National Geographic magazine, I knew there were Polish bagpipes, and I saw a guy with Galician pipes at the Syracuse games one year. Um, the small pipes, well, the, discovering Breton music really came before the small pipes. It was about 1979 or 1980, right when Rare Air came out. And I had three things happened. One was um, I discovered an Alan Stavell album, 
uh, the harp player, and he plays all, all you know all kinds of different instruments. Uh, and also an album by Jean Baron and Christian Annex and Rare Air when they were still in the Cabaret. And I just was very intrigued. What is this music? And there was a local couple in Syracuse that goes out as Bells and Motley, John and Sandra Bromka, and they played some of the music. And I met Natalie Novick, um, who is from Brittany, at the Festival of Nations. And she uh, she answered a lot of questions I had, and uh, but then it was very hard to get that music uh, in this country. You had very little, uh, very little opportunity, and eventually, uh, getting to North Hero to the uh, Northumbrian Pipers Convention, the guys from Quebec would come down, Adviel Capora, and uh, some of the other musicians, and that's really where it it sort of started to snowball, let's say, and yeah. um, meanwhile with the, the small pipes, uh, I read about them in Grove's Dictionary of Music and Musical Instruments, and there was a picture, and uh, there was one Northumbrian piping album I got that had them, and uh, I think it was The Piper's Maggot by, uh, oh, I can't think of the fellow's name, there was a, a one of the fellows was last name was Miller. Uh, anyway, um, about that time Granger and Campbell came out with, with uh, a version of a set of Scottish small pipes and I saw one but it took a bas I think a bassoon read, it was really difficult to play and uh, then uh, my next experience was in 1985 at the Hunter Mountain Celtic Festival seeing the Tannehill Weavers and Ian McInnes had Scottish small pipes, and he got he let me try them out, and uh, I got my first set in '88 from your father, and uh, that's uh, this little D set right here, still playing the same bag and the same chatter reads since '95. Talk to us a little bit more about the early days of the small pipe revival. Well, you used to know everybody who had a set. <laughs> that's not the case now. Yeah, yeah, um, it was, uh, there was, your main event each year was North Hero, uh, the, the Northumbrian Pipers Convention. And then, of course, uh, Hamish Moore started his school. And I'm not sure, not really clear what was going on in the West Coast, but it really, the revival was kind of really getting in full swing by the early 90s. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, Gordon uh, Mooney coming to those. Gordon was huge for us. A he, really big we impact. Learned, we really learned the most from him, yeah. uh, from his albums, but also he's the man who digs up tunes. Who were some of the other people that came in those days at the North Hero? Um, we were very lucky in some of the people, people that aren't with us anymore. We uh, Lance Robson, who just right? died yeah, at right. 99.9 .9 years. He and, was the Northumbrian Piper. And uh, the, the Piper to the Duke in Northumberland. Uh, there, Richard um, Butler. Right, of course, Richard yeah. Butler. And uh, Jean-Christophe Maillard on the Musette du Corps. Um, he's no longer with us. And he was a phenomenal Bombard player as well. And yeah. I got to play with him a couple of times in New York City on, uh, playing uh, events. Um, who else do we see? Well, Jerry O'Sullivan and Patty Keenan and Tom Cregan, and um, uh, Al Purcell, all these Ellen Pipers that came. Um, all the various musicians that would come down with Adviel, um, Rick Pellieri, Vermont's and, own Rick Pellieri, the Polish Piper. While he wasn't uh, an instructor in those days, to Jim Cauldron and his magical van of uh, yes. bagpipes. Yeah, Jim Cauldron had his whole collection of instruments, his whole yeah. library. He would host parties at his home and have um, show everybody how the, the library worked. And you had to bring him a libation. And then he'd sit back and... and uh, drink beer and watch the party go and get a, a free concert. Yeah, he and was a, a lot of good guy. music there. So, but in those days, you know, we didn't have YouTube. We, uh, they're just, you really had to work hard to find music, to find CDs or music books. 
you had to write <laughs> or call. And Sean Folsom was a, was a huge influence uh, and, and a huge um, part of that, those years when he would come and bring his whole collection. And that man's a, a font of knowledge. And, um, you know, uh, so many people have learned so much from him. So, Mike, tell us a little bit more about the North Hero event. So, uh, this was an event that was put together by Alan Jones, who lives in Montreal. He's originally from Wales. And uh, it took place in, in North Hero on Champlain Island. Don't blink, you'll miss it. And uh, in, the, in the town hall. And what began as just a Northumbrian Pipers convention turned into... Uh, if you can inflate it with a bellows or a blowpipe or turn it with a crank and get music out of it, it was there. Uh, and it was seriously the the most important non-highland piping event in North America for many, many years. And Alan is, uh, is just such an important figure because he created that event. And while at times it could be chaotic and disorganized, there was an energy there. And he really made things happen. So many people met because they went there. And all kinds of musical uh, situations took off. Um, Brian McCandless, for instance. Uh, I met Brian um, my first time going there. And uh, now he's uh, one of my best friends. And musical partner in crime and uh, we've explored all kinds of lowland music formed the uh, lowland north american lowland and border pipers association uh, years ago and uh, explored central french music and breton music through the years and we still play it together uh, so alan really really caused all those things to happen and the format was great because you had instruments for sale, CDs, records for sale, uh, classes during the day. Uh, Saturday night was always a big dance that uh, culminated in uh, the whole thing going wild with a fest nose, a uh, Brighton dance. Um, Sunday, more classes, and Sunday night, the big concert. And someday we'll transfer some of the tapes that mm -hmm. I've given to you. So that, that was, um, it was such an important and uh, oh, just can't emphasize the, the importance of it. it. It seemed like that event drew all the interested parties and interesting people together from North America. And I think what, one thing that was interesting also is the last trip that we went to Worlds uh, and you and I played on stage and piping live. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Came full circle, didn't it? Yes, yes, very much. And we met a bunch of people that we knew from North Hero. Julian Goodacre, John Swain, uh, a few of those others. And a bit of, it was like old home week. Yeah, that was pretty special. And uh, I, I remember one year, uh, well, I remember when you saw two or three Scottish small pipes and that was it. And then the following year, everybody had Scottish small pipes. And you, after that, you used to see some bagpipes in G, you know, Central French and Flemish pipes, a couple of them here and there. And then one year got up there and uh, there were 10 people playing in a circle out in the parking lot on various different bagpipes pitched in G. Um, there was always a Highland Pipe presence there, but it was never one that would take over, um, despite what some people would think. Um, and uh, other events like that, they, well, it, it sort of bloomed. And now there's nothing quite like it, although uh, there are some other good events that I would, uh, you know, the, the Pipers Gathering, uh, the, the Upper Potomac Festival. I think there was the magic in those days that mm -hmm. can't be recreated at this point, though. Right. Because, because it was uh, the, the discovering of this uh, uh, new aspect of the art form. Whereas mm -hmm. now, you know, we're, it's still wonderful and we're still teaching people about it, yeah. but it's a known thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, there was a special magic about that. Speaking about those kinds of experiences, 
name uh, besides North Hero? Uh, some of your best piping experiences over the years. Oh, there, there have been a few, quite a few. So, uh, going back to North Hero, Brian McCandless and I getting to play with Adviel Kapora on yeah. stage yeah. was, uh, get, you know, here's one of my favorite bands and getting to play with them. And, uh, and it happened a few times. Uh, that was one. Um, I remember you talking at the time about that, uh, it feeling like graduating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Tanone and uh, Alain LaRue were sort <laughs> of professors. We've finally made it. We've made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I have to include with Manchester in, um, at the Capital District Scottish Games the year that SFU came. And I believe it was 96. And uh, they wanted to have a grade one contest. And we were a top grade two band at the time. And we knew we were playing for second place. So everybody had a pint or toe. And we went out and played. And it was absolutely brilliant. And the drum corps beat SFU. So um, that was a rather a huge experience. <laughs> Other ones, uh, playing with the Chieftains, um, I still can't believe that I do that. Yeah. I've done it solo, I've done it with bands. Um, You've done it with our band. Yes, and uh, known, it, known them for years now on a first name basis. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, that came through all these years working with Seth Gallagher building Ellen Pipes. So, uh, let's see, the. Uh, playing with uh, Bagad Kemperley the three times that I went over to Brittany to do that. Um, that Playing with a grade one Breton pipe band is absolutely amazing. And uh, the curtain goes up and you're on stage and there you know you take right off and you do the set. <laughs> the first time, the first year uh, I kind of didn't know what happened. And the next year I wanted to do it again. <laughs> That's the way it felt ever since. Um, yeah, those would, those would be some, uh, I've had so many great piping experiences. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, how about some of your most favorite tunes? Oh, you really want to go there? <laughs> We'd be here all night. Um, it depends, that depends on what tradition we're talking well, about. Well, let's name a few, <laughs> right. A couple of your absolute favorite Highland Pipe tunes. Okay. Two four competition marches, two favorites, Donald McLean's Farewell to Oban and Arthur Bignold of La Crosque. How about Struce Bass? Well, okay. We're gonna do the old uh the old uh voice gig here, right? <laughs> so uh Struce Bass, oh wow, so many so many stress bass, so little time. Um Never played it in a band, but I have to say Money Musk. Oh, nice. And, uh, oh, the stress bays are so distracting. There's so many of them. Um, you know, uh, uh, Highland Harry was always a go-to for me. Yeah, that's a favorite of mine as well. And, and very ranty and, uh, and, yeah. and a wild Highland sounding. <laughs> Uh, and for reels, because I know you can't ask about stress base, yeah, you might ask absolutely. about the reels. Um, I really, I mean, even with, I really prefer all the little two-parters, but for the competition style reels, oh, Cabaret. What Whenever about, that's played enough. what about um, a favorite two-parter? Um, favorite two-parter. Or a couple of favorite two-parters. Ah, uh, well, uh. The Lads of Mull. Oh, nice. Is a favorite. Um, and a current favorite is the Drampire. Ah. <laughs> so, so the quick story of the Drampire. That's very kind. Paul Anderson, the excellent fiddler from Aberdeenshire and a good friend of mine. Uh, he told me about a guy who would come only out to sessions at night and no one ever saw him during the day. He'd come out and drink whiskey, and so they referred to him as the Drampire. And uh, so last summer in Scotland, we were joking about it a lot, and uh, and you came up with that tune. Yep. 
Yeah. And it, it's just, uh, there are just, we have all our favorites we play here in sessions. So they all fit in. Jigs, uh, six, eight marches and jigs, I just can't name any single one. There's so, you know, I, I'm, uh, my favorite things to play on Highland Pipes are jigs and six eights. Uh, I know that that you're not necessarily a big, big P rock player, but you must have a favorite. Oh yeah, uh, I I never learned to play it, but uh, I I do listen to it. Um, two that I really like, um, I like Flame of Wrath, nice a whole lot, and um, let's see, um, Lament for Sir James McDonald of the Isles. Classic. Um, and there are others. Let's see. Well, the one I like the title of, and I'm not sure how the melody ever went, because I just know it from the Kilberry <laughs> book. The sound of the waves <laughs> crashing against the castle of Dundrum. <laughs> That's a mouthful, that one. Yeah, big, big, a uh, big, big title. What about small pipe music? Favorite tunes on the small pipes? Well, I like all those lowland things. You know, anything that just is a good going tune. Um, you know, I, I the Jenny Nettles story, for yeah, instance, sure. you know, I, I'm kind of, now it's just, well, in the, I'm just a, in the cadre of tunes that we play, but, so Gordon Mooney taught it to Brian McCandless by ear, who taught it to me by ear, and I taught it to Tom Childs by ear, and we taught it to you by ear, and you went bounding around the countryside, Johnny Appleseeding that thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and now I, I have a, a little smirk or giggle every time I hear another band playing it or, or Pipers playing it. It's now a very, very widely known tune. And we really have to get at that fourth part. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, tell us a bit about your current piping life. Teaching, pipe band, pipe making. Well, okay, so with pipe making, I'm, Still do work for Seth Gallagher. I've worked there since uh, 98 for Seth, making Ellen Pipes, um, which I would never, ever, ever want to do on my own because that thing is a contraption. <laughs> Beautiful instrument. Once you're hooked, you can't shake them. But uh, I'm just enjoying making sets of Scottish small pipes one by one, and no two are ever going to be perfectly alike, but... They're nice and pretty, and I want them reliable and good sounding, but, of course. But um, playing, still play with the Manchester Pipe Band and run the uh, the pipe major of the Stephen Driscoll Memorial Pipe Band, uh, one of the only 9-11 memorial bands. The other is Firefighter McFadden uh, Pipes and Drums out of uh, Goshen, New York. Um, and on top of that, uh, back at me. We've had the very best instruction from uh, some of the uh, the top players in Brittany. Uh, we've had uh, Dan Moyne and Yannick Martin, who both play with uh, Bagad Capcaval. We've had um, oh, Roman Sponagel, who plays with Pontivy, and Jan Bonnec, a uh, guy who plays in a, a band called uh, Les Trompettes de Mozambique. Uh, which was a kind of a nickname for a bombard being <laughs> nice. <laughs> just a, because of some of the ebony came from Mozambique. Uh, so we yeah we we get to to play. We've had uh, put on our own fest nose at different times. A fest nose. If anybody needs to know what that is, it's a Breton Cayley. And if you don't know what a Cayley is, well, you better learn. <laughs> so. Uh, Beyond that, uh, teaching individuals, uh, teaching at workshops, teaching working, Catamount? working with Catamount, um, absolutely fantastic. Two of the three Catamount trips to Worlds you've been on. Yes, and gearing yeah. up for the third. I know, right? Very uh, exciting. And it's uh, it's so rewarding. Uh, I would I actually find, as much as I love playing at the upper levels and bands. I've played every level from grade one to five and back again. And I uh, really enjoy playing in the lower grades 
and pulling the music out of people, getting them not to panic when they see uh, gentlemen in tweed jackets with clipboards <laughs> turn around. <laughs> <laughs> which I think does in many bands at the Worlds and other contests. Uh, yeah, just I like looking towards the future of piping. I think it's in a great place, and I like to... I feel like it's our job to carry it on and pass it on. And we're starting to see lots of younger people, students of yours in particular, I can think of, that are doing that. And... Uh, yeah, lots of, there is a younger generation out there making this music, and uh, I think, yeah, we're in a very good spot. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time, Mike. Okay. Slaunch. <laughs> <laughs>